Hello and welcome to a late night latte here on Latte Firm. Arsenal are through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time in God knows how many years. Welcome to the show. If you are tuning in for the first time, please do subscribe to the channel. Lots of content like this to come until the end of the season. Get involved in the chat as well. Uh, like so many you have already been waiting so patiently and my apologies for being a couple of minutes late. It's so good to be with you guys. Last night, I was exhausted walking away from the Emirates. I'm sure wherever you've been watching the game from all over the world, you must have felt the Arsenal paces too. What a night, what a win. And what a what a story for Arsenal. The season just is just going from positive to positive to positive. And it's just hoping now for a very, very happy ending. On tonight's show, we will talk about last night's game, of course. Uh, we will talk about the performance. We'll talk about the penalties. David Raya being the penalty king. We'll talk about the touchline antics between Mikel Arteta and Sergio Conceição. The atmosphere. Mikel Arteta told everybody to bring their energy to the game. So we'll talk about that as well. And we'll start speculating as to who we might get in this week's draw for the quarterfinals. There are, of course, a couple of games being played right now. Uh, so I will keep you up to date with the latest scores on those. And a warm welcome to everybody watching on X. Let's see if we can get the record numbers again. We had more than 3,000 live viewers in our last show. Um, let's see what numbers we get to tonight. So drop a like on the video. Massive help to the channel. We'll get straight involved with the chat. Lots of people have been waiting very, very patiently. Um, Del Devin says, my heart wasn't ready for penalties last night. I slept four hours and was up for work at the crack of dawn today, but it was all worthwhile. Raya claiming crosses is a game changer for us. The Champions League quarterfinals with some emojis. Thank you so much for that, Devin. I, I echo that feeling. I came home from the Emirates. It was gone midnight. Did the quick reaction video. Watched all the highlights I could find on YouTube. Ended up going to bed at a stupid o'clock. Woke up and I felt very sorry for myself all day. Patrick says, evening all. Come on, you gunners. David, evening was the first game I could get to this season. And what a game to pick. Atmosphere was fire. It really was. We're going to talk about the atmosphere, David, but welcome. Kieran, 4215, evening FK. Les, fucking go. Champions League quarterfinals, here we come. Hashtag snack check. We're going to have a snack check, of course. I've been eagerly awaiting to find out what Laura has as part of her snack check. She's bigged it up. There's, is, It's only downhill from here, Laura. Uh, v Vlad says, good evening, everyone. What a win. Still buzzing. Bring on Barcelona or Bayern and let's avenge those painful memories. Come on, you gunners. Uh, Shane is in the chat evening all what a long 14 years it's been to get back to this point chan and you might be surprised chan to see one or two of your photos in tonight's slide deck chan welcome uh, lou wheat says never in doubt oh, i don't know about that right let's bring in some of our panelists and i'll keep the chat coming already hundreds of you watching live please do get involved in the socials get involved in the chat like the video it's a massive massive help to the channel uh, ladies first it's laura laura welcome to the show how are you I'm very tired as well, FK, but I'm I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me again. Mate, it's so good to have you on. And by the way, that is a striking top. Uh, it's good, tell isn't me. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this you is must the, be the uh, only person who loves it. I, 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 you say that, but there, there have been a slowly increasing number of shirts that I've spotted on my way to and from the Emirates in, in recent weeks. So my campaign of, of trying to sell this shirt out is... It's gaining a bit of momentum. It really is. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a fine shirt. And you know what? The boys look absolutely spectacular in it. And I'm convinced to this day, Laura, I know we've spoken about this on the channel before. There is a science behind illuminous or bright colored shirts. I think it is easier to see any sort of fine margin. Marginal gain that we can get is good. Uh, good evening, Jack Thomas. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate that. Yembele, good evening, panel. Snack Check is a classic feast ice cream. Ooh, and Yembele, I tell you what, he's gone for the kill there. Bring me Real. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Yem, that feast ice cream is getting to your head, mate. Always in, maybe a little slice of Spanish humble pie, FK. I love that. Uh, Kieran4215 says, snack check, hot chocolate and a dairy milk bar. That sounds quite rich Ooh. in chocolate. Like the hot chocolate we, and chocolate. Do we dip? Are we Are dipping? Yeah, like... Are we dipping? Surely, yes. Yeah. Surely we're dipping. <laughs> I just throw the balls in the air, Laura just... <laughs> Knocks them out of the park. I love it. What a what a Bergkamp on re-chemistry. Uh, let's bring in uh, the third point of our triangle, and that is today. James, welcome to the show, man. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm glad that I've got an honest panel because I'm also exhausted. I'm absolutely shattered after yesterday. I was at the game as well. I don't get to go to many. Um, I actually, um, I thought it was going to go that way. I thought there was going to be a penalty shootout. Um, I think, is that the first one since 2016 or something ridiculous? in the Champions League or something like that. Um, but that doesn't mean I was ready for it. <laughs> so anyway, we've made it through. We're, we're there. 
we have made it through and it's been a long old day like you know i have i know laura i know you obviously better than james because james you've only come on the show a couple of times but laura you've got your day job i've got my day job and it was testing today let me tell you i was yeah, at my death was... early death by teams i must have been yeah. about early guard at one point um <laughs> i also know. did what you did fk which is when i got home last night from the emirates which was already gone midnight was have a bowl of cereal and then spend 45 minutes watching the highlights and then being like, oh, it's it's 1 a.m. and my alarm is in five hours time. Mm, tomorrow's gonna be a struggle, but such is the way, like you just you just have to get the content in while you're still awake. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm exhausted today. What time do you all get to bed? <sighs> About quarter, quarter to three. <laughs> quarter past one. <laughs> Blimey, I watched everything. I, mate, I watched the <laughs> yeah. TNT stuff. Did you do the whole like match. a full did you do full match replay? Yeah. Because I just I just uh, went through the various no, I, YouTube. So I, so I watched from about 70 minutes onwards, watched all of extra time, watched all the penalty shootout, then I watched all the CBS footage, like all the highlights on YouTube. Um I yeah, I absorbed it all. I went through the timeline. I was ah, it was absolute <laughs> carnage, as uh, fresh PRDC says. What about you, James? What time do you get to bed? Have you not been to bed? Oh my no, god! I, no, no, okay. No, that's not a normal thing. Okay, <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm like one of those disgraceful teenagers who like sleeps five till two. Um, we were filming outside the Emirates for hours. I don't think we actually left the Emirates Stadium to about half one. Um, so by the time I got back, because I come all the way down to I live near Clapham, so I came all this way down and then i was awake i was like i have content to absorb I, i'm seeing clips of raya and Henri clutching hands i thought we've got to <laughs> some of this um bakaya saka doing interview after interview um watch the penalty shootout time and time again so yeah it was a late one worth it it worth it indeed christoph michelle says laura's kit have to wear my anti-kaleidoscope goggles <laughs> kidding aside Wear it in good health. Uh, Donald, you have a fan, Laura says. She looks spectacular in it. <laughs> Thank I'm you, sure Donald. I would too. I'll, I'll put your money <laughs> in the post. <laughs> Alpha Wolf saying, checking in from Sierra Leone. Evening, FK. What a day after the last. Still buzzing, absolutely drained. and not sure if it's the weather or the shouting post-penalty. Love the shirt, Laura. Henkeho, as kind as always, my light and shine. The FK, the lip-licking, snack-checking, handsome devil, and the lovely Laura. Thank you very much for the heart emoji. James, don't feel left out. I'm sure Henke's got a lot of love for you. Okay. It's probably coming. It's in the post like laura says uh right let's rip the snack check straight out of here because v vlad just wants to know can we just do it right now what have you got for us laura what have you teased us with today right okay so i've got like a little like a little mixture which i'm i'm kind of i'm gonna think of a name for it but imagine a packet of revels you know where there's like a coffee yes. one okay yes. so i've got a little goo you know those little pots that you get the goo things in that everyone keeps right that's the yeah. container and in here we have mini eggs, raisins, and wasabi Ooh. peas. Wow. Sorry, what? Yeah. So we've got, just to repeat, just for the chat so everyone's clear, we've got mini eggs, raisins, and then wasabi peas. Me too. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Mini eggs, Ellie, cannot complain. Raisins. Yeah. And wasabi peas? It just with imagine chocolate? like yeah, imagine like a kind of the sweet and sour popcorn that you get that's you know salty and sweet. That's that's what this is. And it just, you know, it's kind of like, okay, am I am I gonna get a really spicy taste? Am I gonna get a nice kind of sweet raisin? Am I gonna get a mini egg? It's genius. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's my snack. I mean, that's not the word. That's not the word that I would have used, but it's it's certainly intriguing. <laughs> um, that is some snack check. Uh, I appreciate you you sharing, James. I mean, what do you have for us tonight? For Dragon's Den, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah, I think so. I think definitely, so. definitely. Oh, well, two hundred grand for one percent of this. <laughs> wow, <laughs> with my wow. nonsense what, 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 mix. <laughs> honestly, oh James, um, what have you got for us? Come on, what have I come in with? Okay, last time I was really boring. I came in with chocolate digestives so then i had another idea but i dumped it because i realized i'm not five years old so <laughs> it was i'm gonna tell you what the other idea was then unveil what i've got i was gonna whip up some angel delight oh <laughs> i know but then i'm like i'm 28 years old i can't be having it on the internet like maybe behind the scenes so what flavor what flavor butterscotch yeah nice. yeah it's yeah, really yeah. good right okay now that i know it's accepted last time I was too shy to bring Rivita and Marmite, but everyone loves that. Mm -hmm. So I think third appearance will be Rivita and Marmite with Angel Delight after. So I've got penguins, quite a lot oh. of them. 
Penguins are elite. What have you got? They're bull. They're yeah, the whole packet. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, so we've got a joke. What did the penguin get from the genie and the lamp? I've not read these. <laughs> oh, no. Three fishes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, Would God. you like another? I've got a whole pack. Yeah. No, no. We need to rescue this. Yeah, go on then. One more. One more. What, one more. Why did the penguin make a fish pun? Just for the halibut. Just, you know what? Yeah. Just for the halibut. halibut That's eaten. really good. And I bought neutral grain really as well good. because the healthier option. Just to, ba- so. just to balance it out. Okay, well, look, you you start yeah. noshing on those penguins. Um, that is a that is a hell of a snack track. Uh, Ars Avengers says Jaffa Cakes for him. Uh, Xander was in the snack check earlier saying classic builder's tea, kettle steakhouse barbecue, and a cream egg. So the crisps and the chocolate and tea. Wow. Um, people aren't holding back. The celebration police himself is in the house and says dreadful. I'm hoping you don't mean the show. I I'm assume you that's aimed at me, I think. <laughs> the snack check, yeah, probably. And uh, Ham, I've got to show this up again. We didn't go too far <laughs> for that snack check. So listen, I'm going to bring a bit of decorum to this channel and to rescue before it's all far too late. I have in front of me not just any, but an M&S. Yum, yum. With I've never had one. classic tea. So I'm going to dunk my yum yum and enjoy that. And by the way, I had a very, I had an ever so cheeky Nando's today. So I'm fasting, obviously. <laughs> it's Ramadan. And I had a chat, I had a Nando's to break my fast. What's your Nando's order? Laura, what's your Nando's go to? Oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. No, no, come on. Oh, it's far too late for that now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Come on. <laughs> what's up? Yeah, you're way beyond. Might have done it. <laughs> I can't have anything spicy. Okay. So I have oh, it. Good. I have the like um lemon and herb. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, me too. Me too. A... I knew you oh, were really? a queen. What? You are a king and queen. We are the perfect hat trick. Lemon and herb is the elite flavor at Nando's. Let yes. me tell you, I'm a man who could who could outspice most people. And trust me, lemon and herb is the way to go. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so I used, happy. I used to pretend and I used to get medium just to have the little flag in it, and then I'd be there bright red in the face tears streaming like "Mm, delicious now i just i'm proud (laughs) you get the medium flag and then the lemon in her bottle (laughs) and just drench it i love it i love it flip doc in the chat saying yum yums penguin jokes mini eggs and wasabi peas never stop doing snack check thank you for that uh pete says evening fk ask vengers wow oh my god it's bournemouth four luton three luton with three nil up at half time they're now four three down that's my poor Rob Edwards. Oh dear. He's yeah, going to get it. I feel we need to see a bit more of Rob Edwards. I feel we, we all need that. I think we all do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Laura. Right. Let's get onto the yeah. football chat. Welcome one and all. Keep the chat coming. 800 of you watching live right now. So please do engage on all the socials. Let's start sharing the screen like I normally do. So the slides. Look, going into the game, lady and gent, a massive, massive fixture. And of course, we went through on penalties having lost the first tie by a goal to nil, and then having rescued last night by a goal to nil. We'll talk about the performance in just a second. But the team news, starting with you, James, unchanged apart from David Ryer, of course, coming back, not lone tied, if you will, uh, came in, I thought was actually a very good shout for man of the match. And I'll explain why later. Ben White, Gabriel, uh, Saliba and Kivior with Rice, Jorginho and Erdegaard, Saka, Trossard and Havertz up top. Um, how did that set the mood for you, James, before the game? Um, you know, we'd known for a while, didn't we, that Martinelli wasn't going to be involved. Um, so this was probably what everyone would have had their money on. I think, I think some people thought there might be a sneaky Jesus start in there. You know, he'd been getting some minutes. Um, but Trossard, well, listen, he got the big goal, didn't he? Um, absolutely justified his place in the 11. So yeah, pretty much what I expected. Uh, Laura, James just sort of alluding to the fact that we were maybe thinking Gabby Jesus might start. He didn't. Uh, there was also noise and maybe Zinchenko starting at left back. Were you pleased with the starting eleven? Yeah, I think um, I was expecting to see Jesus, but I wasn't, you know, didn't feel that strongly about it. But I am really glad that he um, kept with Kiwior because I know we'd talk about it, but he was immense. And I think mm-hmm. he has played so well in the past couple of weeks. It would have been a bit of a I, I, tactically, I don't. I don't think it would have been the right thing to bring Zinchenko straight into the starting lineup, and I think we saw from his small but difficult cameo at the end why that was. So, in terms of that starting lineup, I think that was pretty solid, um, based on and a, and a really solid bench as well. I think there were lots of people saying, right, Jesus and Zinchenko on the bench is actually really good. It's that kind of like panic stations, throw them on if we really need to win the game. Um, so having that on the bench was was nice. I know Partey was on the bench as well. 
um, but perhaps not not the occasion to bring him on for his first start for or his first appearance for months. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Party when he came on for his cameo against Sheffield United, looked like he was just jogging in the park. It was just like, you know, a man lost in the park. And yeah. uh, he's, he's I'd, absolutely I'd not forgotten ready. that he played FK. I'd completely forgotten that he played. <laughs> I, I thought I thought this was going to be his first one, so that's I think that says what you need to know about his uh, his little twenty minutes he had the other day. Yeah, very true. Yeah, to be to be fair, you're right. I think look, the subs bench to your points is looking stronger. You know, we had the two goalkeepers on the bench: Ramsdell and Hine, Tommy Asu, Cedric, Sinchenko, Elneny, Partey, Vieira, Smithrow, Nelson, Inketia, and Jesus. I was a little bit surprised as to how late Mikel Arteta made those changes, and I was also very surprised to see Eddie Inketia come on. But hey, there we are. Um, in just just to finish off, I guess uh, the question here: I was surprised with the starting lineup. I thought Mikel was going to Mikel. I thought he was going to have at least one change you know maybe Sinchenko coming in some sort of a you know let's invert and really sort of put pressure on Porto um wasn't the case and I think that's actually done Kivior a lot of favors in terms of his confidence kivior has been playing brilliantly I love the balance that he brings to our back four there are some clips going around on social media with sort of different examples of interceptions and what he did last night and he's just a really stable player Orpheus Jones in the chat saying thought Kivior had good and bad moments got skinned a little too easy for my liking but then he's not really a left back but I do think the physicality he brings because he's a six foot plus player um I, I think he's very difficult to beat. He reminds me a lot of like the Nathan Ake at City sort of centre back at left back, not going to be really used to sort of tuck in. And he played really well. So look, no complaints with the team in the end. And of course, we did win the game by goal to nil. I've got to say, James, going back to you, the game was a real sort of scrappy, um, fractious sort of affair. And as I bring up the match stats and key moments from UEFA.com, you can see that possession was split relatively evenly between the two sides 55 percent to 45 percent we had 14 shots on goal porto nine um we had how many do we have on target i don't actually know these stats are very different to the premier league stats but i mean look it didn't feel like that sort of a game did it james like i think i think to myself did we really have 14 shots on goal it felt like there were two or three it was a very sort of start stop start stop you know they were tr they tried to sort of stifle our momentum they were doing that rotational going down looking for treatment every now and again the goalkeeper was wasting time from the goal kicks from the get go and what did you make of the actual game itself as a spectacle i'll be honest i feel sorry for all the uh, actually i don't feel sorry for um all the hate alongs and all the rivals because not only <laughs> did they sit through what ended up an arsenal win but it was just a horrible game of football. <laughs> I mean, from my, I'm, and I think it's hard to watch it without the emotion behind as well. I, I stopped and reflected on it just before penalties. And I thought, because I was there with my brother and I said, let's be honest, we've not been very good. And it's one of those where I think I mean, in terms of an attacking, exciting display, I think both teams did well to kind of nullify each other. And actually, actually tactically is really interesting. I had a lot of praise for Porto, which I begrudgingly gave them after the nonsense of their manager was on all of yesterday. Um, but they were set up really well. They stifled us. And so it was a kind of moments game. And we had the one moment. We nearly had a second. It was disallowed. Um, we just about did enough. I think over the two legs, we were on the eye, the better team. But they did really well, to be fair. And it just made for a bit of a scrappy European time, really. It was, and it was a very different game to what we used to, Laura. I mean, you know, when you think about how young this team is, how young the manager is, how young the squad is, it's not too often that we're going to come up against a team that has got European pedigree, that are the masters of these dark arts, that, that play a very different type of, I guess, continental football, if you think about football away from Premier League. So this would have been a really good experience for the boys. And, and I mean, as Shane McDonald says in the chat, the ball was in play for 66 minutes. 66 minutes i mean over you know across what 120 last night that just tells you all you need to know about the tempo and the pace of the game doesn't it yeah and i i got to agree with, with james when i sort of take a step back that was one of the worst games of football i've ever had to sit through and i say that without exaggeration in terms of purely okay. as a spectacle it was you know the crowd were at our kind of like most petty and sort of belligerent but that's that's a response to the the players that I've, I've seen some really kind of diverse views on the refereeing so I'm really I'm, I'm interested to know what you guys think but I thought it was dreadful because yeah, it was really really inconsistent and I think for, for both teams I think you know I think the one that Pepe got a yellow card for was right in front of me and I was like okay he's just giving him a yellow card I'm not sure that was fair blowing for for tackles, stopping the game as well for injuries when it wasn't a head injury. I was just like, this is actually ruining this as a 
as a spectacle, let alone the kind of like tactical intrigue between the sides. Because as James said, Porto were, I think for the first 20 minutes, I think we were outplayed. I really yeah. do. We could not get the ball back off them for the first 10 minutes. They also looked quite dangerous. Like their keeper is obviously really good playing out from his feet. And I think on that left-hand side, we we were a bit found out. And obviously, you know, Saka, for the most part, he was trying, but he was completely nullified. So I think over the balance of the ties, we we probably edged it. But Porto were very, very good. And, and, and to your point, FK, like they will have learned a lot from that because we, you know, over the course of the best part of two hours... Yes, we couldn't break them down, but they have some very, very quick players and it could have been very understandable for us to crumble. Loads of young players, big, you know, big crowd, lots of noise, lots of expectation. And for them to come through that is, I think that's what I will take away. Um, mm. But it, it was just, uh, I said to my brother who I sit next to is, um, you know, I have hated every single minute of this tie with Porto. I hated the, the game against them. I did not enjoy it last night by the last little bit. But that's what this team needs to learn about European football. These teams are not going to fold over like Sheffield United did, West Ham, etc. And they're going to have to learn a different way to play. So I think they will have taken an immense amount of confidence and experience from that. But as a game, absolutely rubbish. And I can't imagine what it would have what it would have been like if we'd have lost those penalties. I would have been filthy. Yeah, to to go through all that and then fall out of it would have been awful. I mean, did yeah. you, did you guys feel that? Arsenal didn't really know whether to stick or twist at times. Like the, the moment for me that summed up was um, the Saliba yellow card. Mm -hmm. He went chasing the guy all the way to the touchline, but watching it in real time, I remember thinking, you don't really mean it. I don't know how to explain it. I wasn't convinced. And then when he brought him down, I got yellow. I was like, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, it just felt like Arsenal didn't know, are we pressing them? Are we not? Are we, are we just trying to be quite mature and know that that moment will come or we trying to batter him three nil in the first 20 and then we couldn't get the ball like you said and then it was like well what do we do here and I think Arsenal just didn't really know and I think they kind of played on instinct a little bit like okay we've got the ball let's see if we can progress okay we don't now let's just make sure we don't concede and it was all a bit tetchy from them and it, I think it was from the crowd at times as well. I think they were also really nervous like th there yeah. were a couple of small mistakes made by Saliba and Gabriel small in inconsequential things like slightly you know mishit passes the ball bobbling up and down a bit that just were quite uncharacteristic for them you know yeah. in the past couple of weeks that I think that nervousness radiated through the rest of the team the crowd Jorginho was losing his mind in the middle of the park shouting yeah. at the rest of the team he, so he was clearly frustrated as you said James around not quite sure what we're doing here there's no flow when we win the ball back we're kind of okay right now we do our thing but then you know just 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 had no idea whether to, as you said, press, do our lovely footwork, et cetera, et cetera. It was just, it was, it was quite an uncomfortable, painful watch. Yeah, that's why I loved Kivior, Erdegaard and Havertz's performances in particular, because, I mean, Erdegaard on a technical level was out of this world. But I just love the players that were in the wars and kind of recognised this is one scrappy affair, so let's just try and get stuck in. And, you know, Havertz running off the touchline, booting one to the crowd and shoving their managers, one way to do it. But I just kind of loved that. They were the three players on the ride that, for me, like, quite quickly grasped what the occasion was. Um, so, yeah, that's why, for me, they were the standouts. Yeah, I, th I think it was a big occasion. And listen, it is different to Premier League football. And of course, it's the first time that the club were in the quarterfinals, I think for, for 14 or 16 years or whatever that stat is. And I think the players would have been only, where, you know, far too aware of that. Mikel Arteta, of course, has got a point to prove as well. You know, he's not really shown in Europe what he can do as a coach to, you know, painful defeats in the Europa League in his time here. And it was really important that we overcame this Porto team. And Andy BZ, his comment is, spot on it it was a tense game it felt like a chess match like yeah. I think to, to Laura's point I think there was a bit of nerves I think Porto came with a game plan that we've seen teams try and do in the past but they executed it because they've got a really tight defense in in Portugal they've got the European pedigree I mean Pepe what that guy is doing in his 40s playing at this level is beyond me like yeah he's, he's physically just immense and he even gave it back to the north bank like pointing at the two stars on their shirt at one point which i thought was re tremendous banter but like <laughs> the yeah, top top team really well coached obviously and i think there was nerves you know i think gabriel and saliba were, were pressed really really quick from the start and saliba wasn't allowed to breathe in possession and i i finally saw a chink in his armor i thought oh this is interesting this is unusual like saliba normally has all the time in the world to play and move and 
he just wasn't, you know, what he, he was just having his heels snapped at constantly. So I think, yeah, you know, the key takeaway for this, obviously we're through, but it's been a real learning experience for for the young boys, which will put them in good stead for the latter stages of the tournament. Um, the the deadlock was broken and it was from a player who was, in my opinion, not very good until he scored. Um, we were trying to use him as an outlet. Of course, Martinelli's not there. So you miss that natural sort of energy, that directness, that aggressiveness in the in the take on a fullbacks when you've got him out wide. But Trossard, yeah, his ball control wasn't quite right. He wasn't quite making the right decisions to sort of flick things on or to come inside or to go up. Like he, he was struggling. And then all of a sudden, and we can't miss the influence of the skip. I mean, what a... I mean, twinkle toes right there with the little dink ball, which was beautifully weighted. And I love the shot of Odegaard falling to the floor, but just keeping his eye on the ball as he's falling. Beautiful weight. And then Trossard comes up clutch. I mean, Laura, at that moment, it was, I think it was a goal that I didn't really see coming. I thought we were going to get into halftime nil-nil, but what a goal. I mean, the weight of that goal is phenomenal, right? And I, I was, I think in the five seconds previously typing out a text message to my WhatsApp group about how poor I thought Trossard was <laughs> um, only for him to, you know, shut me up in, in the right way. But yeah, that was the kind of like moment of quality we we needed. Um, and I think in these games where it's very tight, you essentially need your talent to step up, even if it's in one moment. And that Odegaard, I think it's like maybe a second and a half touches the ball three, four times, but just enough to basically give himself space to make the pass. That's, you know, that's, that's all you need um, to kind of break them down. But I think I didn't see it coming. I thought, I thought my worst sort of fears were going to, were going to come, come true and that we'd go in nil, nil and, you know, going in at nil, nil is a very, very different score line, very different challenge for the second half because they could have just sat back, you know, and, and kind of just waited to hit us. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a beautiful goal. I think you could see in his celebration, uh, you know, a, a sense of relief, maybe a sense of acknowledgement that he'd not been very good. Um, and from then, from then on, I did think we would kind of kick on. I thought, right, okay, there's the goal we need. Let's, you know, two, three, four. Um, so credit to, as much as I hate giving them credit, credit to Porto that mm. that actually didn't really change anything, you know, in terms of their game plan. You know, we're just back on back on level terms. So it was it was a really really good finish, and it just it just shows the amount of quality that we have in in Odegaard and Trossard. I think Trossard is better off the off the bench um, in terms of his being an impact sub. But if you can be playing that badly but still come up with that finish, great. Don't care. Drop a naught out of ten and then score. Fine, <laughs> fine by me. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a great goal in, in a great moment. And 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 James, you started talking about the skipper just before at the most delicious assist and through ball. But but just talk to us about the influence that Erdegaard had on on the whole night. And actually, in recently he's come into such good form. He's leading by example. I know he wears a captain's armband, but you know sometimes sometimes captains can go missing. You know we know what Bruno does at United, for example. But Erdegaard is just on another planet, isn't he? Yeah, you know when he. Um... You said you love that kind of clip of him falling as he plays the pass. And look, I might be overdoing it, but I feel like he has to fall to pull off that pass. I know that sounds really silly, but sometimes to execute it, to to get the right weight, you almost got to like put less into it. I don't. He thread that through like the one small little lane he had. I, honestly, I I still watch that goal back. I'm like, I don't see whether I don't see where the lane is, and he found it. Um, it was, yeah, it was brilliant. And he, he ran his socks off. We say that every game, but he really did. I don't want us to ever take that for granted. Um, his tight control was unbelievable. There was a bit, there was a moment, I can't remember if it was second half or if it was a second half extra time where he was just dancing past players and threaded it sort of down the right channel. And you're thinking, oh my word, he's just playing on it. He's just on another level. And then he steps up and takes the first penalty, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he, so he sets the tone. He was brilliant. He was really, really good. I, I thought it was strange. And, it's got me thinking a lot about the way Arteta wants to approach Champions League ties compared to the Premier League is we scored that goal, the one time Ben White actually inverted and came into midfield, which because he had come inside, that channel where Erdogan would normally operate in, he had a bit more freedom, so he moved central. Rice was therefore moving into the box. I think that was the first time we actually had their midfield a bit 
Like, what's going on here? Who do we pick up? Where do we go? Because, you know, Erdogan gets the ball. Their midfielders have really dropped deep. Conceição tries to close them down. He takes them all out of the game. Then they try and press because they were out of position. It was the one time we actually caused a little bit of chaos and made a bit of a mess around their kind of midfield structure. And I'm surprised we didn't see more of that because White was basically playing always down that right channel. So, I don't know. It makes me wonder whether, by design, Arteta doesn't want to try and sort of get players out of position, overload midfield too much and get caught. But that was just one observation. Otherwise, he was great um, in everything he was asked to do on and off the ball. It was a real captain's performance, you know. And we had a good debate in the um, in the office about Erdegaard, Cazorla, Ozil and Fabregas and how you rank them. Really difficult, right? But the one thing that, however you put them, because you could argue for Erdegaard being fourth on that list. You could argue him for him being whatever. But he's already giving us moments that a lot of those players didn't. And... And the way he's performing with the armband, I think it's not long before he, yeah, he's in a serious conversation. But we'll leave that to when the major honours come. Yeah, listen, for me, I've said on this channel for some time, it's not about honours actually all the time, James. You know, I, okay. I get what you're saying. And I think I think most people would agree. But I think the influence early guard has had on this team, you know, I'm obviously old, much older than both of you. And I've seen the likes of Sesk come through from their debuts. I've seen Ozil strut his stuff and Erdegaard has entered the chat. I mean, for me, is that he is as good as and as influential as he's doing it over a sustained period. And of course, if we do win some silverware, then of course, that's the icing on the cake. Lots of lovely chat coming in about Erdegaard. V Vlad's one's caught my attention. Erdegaard's work off the ball sets him apart from those other players. You know, Sesk was a hard worker. Ozil, we know. But Erdegaard, I mean, his hard work is insane. Four three three saying signing Erdegaard for thirty five million pounds yeah. was absolute robbery. Um, and there was another comment which I wanted to take out. We you know when you watch the Erdegaard pass from last night in slow motion, but I think the camera angle that shows him playing it towards the camera or towards the goal, he takes out four defenders. And if you every time I watch it in slow motion, I see the Porto feet just flicking out of the ball, trying to clear it, <laughs> but the ball just rolls beautifully. Yeah. It's like art. Honestly, yeah. I'm. I, it's just fabulous, and, and and what a goal that was! The game didn't get much bit better. Sadly, uh, we knocked on the door. We had a goal disallowed, of course, which I think maybe in the Premier League may have been overturned uh, because it didn't. It didn't seem that there was much contact from uh, from Havertz on Pepe and Odegaard dinked it in. But the game did end one nil, and uh, luckily it wasn't raining because we're uncovered where I sit, and it went into extra time. And then, of course, after extra time, it went to penalties. And look. Penalty kings. I'm not over-egging it. We have had 17 penalties at, since the start of this season. Four in a shootout against Manchester City. Four in a shootout last night. And we've had nine in the actual season. And we've scored all 17 of them. I mean, it's phenomenal. Um, and I hope that we're not jinxed by that later in the season. But there is an art to doing penalties. And you know, there was that science behind Arsenal delaying the take of it, all of their penalties. If you remember that, guys, when the ball is put on the spot. And the players are taking six or seven, seven seconds on average to kind of compose themselves. James, you mentioned earlier, Erdegaard was first off the off the spot. And it was great to get the, the, the shootout at our end at the North Bank. An almighty cheer went up as the toss was given. And then, of course, we went first, which is always great, as Ali McCoy said mm -hmm. in the commentary. Um, talk, talk us through the four pens because, you know, Erdegaard... Havertz then with the most nonchalant sort of walk up run up. I thought if anyone was going to miss, he looks like he had the body language, but he, I mean, mate, <laughs> he sent the keeper on holiday. But yeah. Kai Osaka, bullet finish, and then of course big deckers. I mean, it's this is mastered. This is this is you know intentional. Our penalty execution yeah. is sensational. They, they talked about practicing it, and I think Raya said we practice it not just for this. We've been practicing it all season, so you could see that in the in the where they took them, they ooze confidence. I mean, apart from the Havertz one, I couldn't believe the way Saka, Rice and Erdogan just slapped them all in. I was a bit like, all right, calm down. Have <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you really thought this through? <laughs> and, then, and then Havertz did it in his way, but so coolly. I think he's 21 for 21 in uh, career penalties. So, wow, <laughs> good on him. He clearly knows what he's doing from the spot. Um, Raya looked really... There's one... I don't, I don't want every time we talk about Raya to bring up Ramsdale, but there's one thing I felt when Ramsdale was stepping up for a pen, I always felt like he was diving a little after it was taken. I had to explain it. Like I never, ever believed he was getting there with Raya. If they went the other way, he was still flying, you know, the way he'd, he'd picked. It was total conviction. Um, and, and they worked on it and there you go. That's the rewards for working hard on it. And 
they looked really confident. I have to say, they they looked very calm. And don't take it from me, take it from Thierry Henry, who I don't know if you saw the clip of him <laughs> yeah. when, yeah, I mean, it was incredible. Galeno stepping up and he goes, yeah, I'm going down. And they're like, why? He's, like, he's missing it. I, I can tell he's missing it. <laughs> and while I am no Thierry Henry, obviously you don't want to see me on a pitch. Um, like, I kind of know what he means in that the way the Arsenal players went up, I was like, and the way they took them, I was like, they just had so much confidence doing it. Um, and I always had a feeling like Raya, he's looking big in this goal. So maybe that's just pure hope. Maybe that you sleep on it and then you go, oh, I always knew that. But I just, I don't know. The, the players looked really like they knew what they were doing. Did you get that feeling, Laura? So it's interesting you use the word calm there because I, I, so I sit above the tunnel. So I'm close enough that I can see, you know, enough of what the players are doing. And the, the, the atmosphere in the teams before the penalty shootout was completely different. Yeah. So Arsenal were, as you said, really, really calm. Like there was no kind of like back slapping, pumping each other up. Yeah. That to an observer, you might go, they actually look a bit defeated. And and my brother and I were both discussing that Porto looked so up for these pens. They were like slapping each other's back, high fiving. There was energy in their little huddle. Look over at Arsenal, not much movement, very calm. Quietly made their way out onto the pitch walked a couple of paces forward, which I know upset Porto a lot. So in that moment, both me and my brother were like, Arsenal look a bit defeated and they look really kind of like tired and down, whereas Porto are really up for it. But actually, as as people are saying in the chat, taking a penalty is not about being hyped up. It's about being calm. And I honestly think the the kind of lack of, you know, sort of bravado that Arsenal showed is is just a direct result of just being calm and just knowing that they've practiced it they know what to do they all stepped up incredibly calm very little kind of nonsense whereas Porto yeah. you know driven on by their manager on the sideline who just you know behaved a certain way all night but it was just really interesting to me that you know it, my initial interpretation of it was oh Arsenal look really nervous really defeated and Porto really up for this completely different outcome um and, and I have to say that's the first time I've ever seen a penalty shootout like live um, in, in a stadium. Um, and I, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. My Garmin buzzed me at one point with a heart rate of 125. Oh, and I'm no. like, 125 <laughs> beats per minute and I'm standing still. Um, I didn't watch a single one of our penalties. All I did was just watch the crowd in front of me. No. Um, but I did wow. watch the Raya saves because I was like, you know, I've got to watch this, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm such a worse. I'm, you guys are bigger people than me. I couldn't, I could barely watch. No, I was, um, they, I don't know how to explain my angle. Essentially I was like along the goal line, but high up. So I had a really good angle of it. And I, I, I don't know why I went full sort of Pep Guardiola. I, when we scored straight faced, <laughs> when, when we had one saved straight faced, the crowd were going crazy. I was like, but then the minute we'd won it, Fucking pandemonium. Sorry, yeah. I swore. Uh, it was just like... I, I had to lie on the floor, genuinely, because I was so <laughs> just tired, for one, because it had yeah. been a long evening. And I was just so overwhelmed by, by it. I just lay on the on the sort of cold concrete just for a couple of seconds to calm it was, down. It must have been a bit grim. <laughs> it was. I've got, I've got to be honest. I think, you know, this is going to sound really stupid, right? But just bear with me. Like, it, it's all good and well and fun beating get teams like 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, 6-0. Of course, we, we want to win win games like that every week, right? But I said on the quick reaction video after the Brentford win on Saturday, there's something about a game where, you know, you're you're hunting and you're chasing and you're knocking and knocking and knocking and then you finally get that late breakthrough. The release that you get in that moment when you score is is so elite. And like the sense of jeopardy in last night's game, the whole tie, like not knowing like it being a tense game of chess and it was quite a scrappy affair and you're thinking, you know, Porto, they look dangerous on the break and we were trying to take more risks and as the as the clock was ticking and you know, the ref was a joke with the injury time but then the extra time and then the first half of extra time, second half, like the the, the, the fear of the unknown, like of not knowing whether we're going to, how this is going to end, it was really quite exhilarating and then of course when it does go your way towards the end, it's just the most insane feeling. The top two left pictures on that slide, by the way, courtesy of Hepta Views, uh, Hepta, who many of you will know, just go to at Hepta Views on both Instagram and X. If you've missed out his coverage from last night, you must be asleep. A real privilege to have been able to uh, invite him uh, to the stadium last night. And he took some amazing photos. And watching him live in action 
let me tell you, ladies and gents, is just phenomenal. Like this guy is is a pro at what he does. He's a genius creatively. And and the image on the right there, I love it. The boys with the close-ups, courtesy of now underscore Arsenal. The emotions on the face, I mean, Saliba, there's been a video going around today of Saliba with his old sort of, you know, badge pumping and, you know, this is my club, like shouting it. Oh, I love it. I love everything to do with it. I can't not talk about David Raya. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. And James, I'm aware you've got to step off in a few minutes time. So let's stick with you first. Um, A couple of things in the chat. Uh, first up, tongue in cheek from Wally, who says we should enjoy a enjoy enjoy a we should enjoy a Raya's ability on penalties because it will be coached out of him soon as it has with all of our goalkeepers recently. But Patrick saying masterclass from Raya. Um, I mean, look, David Raya now for me and for many, it always has been for Miguel. To be fair, is now the undisputed number one. Like I finally seen it. And I've talked about it in in recent weeks that I've had this sentimental attachment to Rambo. I'm still not quite ready yet to see Ramsdale play for Chelsea or for Newcastle or for someone of that sort of ilk. Um, But I didn't see the tangible difference between the two goalkeepers. And now it's so clear to me, like he's such a clean catcher. He's a cool MF on the ball. His distribution is sensational. And you know, sensational from, from, from the line yesterday in terms of the shootout. I mean, James, what can you say about David Raya that everybody isn't saying right now? I mean, humble pie for a lot of Arsenal fans and a lot of football fans, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I might have wondered why we were spending 30 million on someone who wasn't an upgrade, apparently. <laughs> um, what can I say? What can I say? That's that because... All I can say is fair play, Mikel, and everyone else I was wrong. There were these rumours that maybe not everyone at the club was convinced that this was a deal to be done. But like you said, we're all we're all seeing and getting it now. I think where this team has really evolved, you know, I touched on um, Kivior and Havertz, and I put Raya in this as well. Um, I keep using this word cold, like Arsenal last season. I, I took real issue with people saying that we were an emotional team because I think people kind of misunderstood that we were a side that, were fueled by that energy. We wouldn't have been in the position we were in without that energy. And suddenly we were in a title race that people didn't expect. And then everyone was having a go at us basically for not being ready for it. Like, I, and I think this season, Raya, Kivior, Havertz, and, and I love Ramsdale, Zinchenko and Jesus, and especially the last two, I think have so much quality that they can bring to this team. But the three that are playing in their positions now, for me, they're more cold. They're more, I've got a job to do. And, Raya is better with his feet and he does claim better, but I think it's about decision-making and concentration and professionalism and a lot of those other things that are more personality-driven and mentality-driven that are making him the number one or the reason why I think Zinchenko's going to have to work really hard to get his place back in the team. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that adds anything different to the conversation, but I I really think he came through as an extremely experienced player, but he's not really, when you think about it, he's not. So he was fantastic. He was the hero of the day. He was, uh, but it's all kicking off uh, across Europe. I mean, Atletico Madrid have just scored to go two one up against Inter Milan. Depay yeah. scoring the goal with three minutes to go. That could go to extra time. Dortmund currently leading against PSV two one on aggregate and Ornstein, has apparently tweeted that Ben White has agreed terms on a new long-term contract at Arsenal Football Club due to be uh, mm. signed, sealed and delivered next week. Maybe there'll be some sort of an announcement uh, while the England games are playing. That'd be quite a nice, uh, ironic thing. Um, mm. Laura, uh, I've, I've put in a picture there of, of Rambo. One of the things that I noticed in the highlights when I was watching it in the morning is that Ramsdale was so quick to sprint from the dugout, from the touchline to go and embrace his teammate, his colleague, his friend um, and his rival. Um It's a good thing to see. I know it was an emotional day for Ramsdale at the weekend against Brentford, potentially his last game for Arsenal, but this is really healthy, isn't it? I mean, the camera's always on the goalkeepers, the camera's always on the players, but to see them embrace one another like that, and he knows how much it would have meant for David Raya, it's it's good good harmony in the squad. Yeah, it is, and I I think you're right. It's not been an easy week for Ramsdale, you know, regardless of the fact that he... You know, probably kept in the match in the second half. He's just done a howler on, in, wow. on his potential loss kind of game for Arsenal and then watched his rival save two penalties to send us through to the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Like From a personal point of view, that must be gutting, absolutely gutting. And to, have, and to know that the camera is going to be on you regardless of what you do 
it's it just speaks volumes as to how he feels about this squad and, and we can talk about where he's off to but ultimately it it is harmonious and it's healthy to have a, a kind of feeling like that in in the squad and you hope that the same is true for all the subs um so Zinchenko knowing that he's gonna have to earn his place back but they all ran on you know in those moments it, it, it's just not about you it's about the team and it's about the club um and it's just very very healthy to see the one thing I will say on Raya is I don't think I'd ever heard him give an interview before and I was like I know this is going this is a, <laughs> yeah this too. is an amazing accent like what you know it's sort of I, just, I was just like oh he's that he's, he's northern okay and, and obviously someone you know um tweeted me saying he went through Blackburn's Academy mm. or, or somewhere I was like great yeah, okay yeah. another string to his bow great you know amazing keeper great accent very articulate Bingo. <laughs> Is it the full package? Uh, Christoph yeah. Michel saying that your your heart rate during the penalties, Laura, was low zone <laughs> to heart rate. Yeah. Wow, he says. Uh, 433 also saying, same Kirky. Closed my eyes, waited for the noise as soon as we started each run up. <laughs> Um, look, I mean, look, David Raya, undisputed number one. I think uh, there was one comment where he sort of, uh, where someone said that he's kind of etched himself now into, you know, folklore uh, in terms of, you know, history and 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 playing sort of ability and all that sort of stuff. And I think he's he's going to take some knocking, uh, put it that way. Um, I want to close before we sort of end by looking at who we might want in the draw as the games are still ongoing across Europe on the touchline sort of antics that we saw. Um, now, Sergio Conte Sao, um, apologies if I've completely butchered his name. He talked at uh, the post-match press conference about Mikel Arteta saying that he had said something during the game that insulted his family. And it was a family member who's no longer with him. Uh, now, of course, if that's true, that's it's not, it's not what you want to see, not what you want to hear. You can understand why someone would say something in the heat of the moment. I mean, what did you make of it all, James? Like two managers going at it. And then, of course, when the final whistle went, we went into sort of full granite Jacquemus mode, like Trossard, Jesus taking their shirts off, giving it the big, and you know players had to be separated from one another. Is it something that you like to see? Do you think it's healthy, or you know, do you think it's just stuff that's better left, you know, forgotten? So you know, when this stuff happens, my initial reaction is to go, James, don't be on the wrong side of history. If if something actually comes out, some kind of footage that Mikel Arteta has gone off on one of him, then I might be deleting tweets. And then everything emerged where he had a go at the Man City bench and he had a go at Thomas Tuchel. And I thought, this guy, what a loser. Like, this is incredible. Um, and I love the way Arteta didn't say anything. And Arsenal just came out with an official statement. Like, we deny that Mick and Arteta slagged off his family. So, look, okay. I, I, I'm inclined not to believe it. Of course, I will publicly apologise if somehow it is proved that Arteta did. But I just thought his behaviour throughout was a bit of a joke as well, to be honest. I I just like, had a lot of respect for his team and the way they played. And clearly, he's a very talented coach and manager. And yeah, like, OK, he's very good. But all the... Every, I, I just love that Havertz just gave him a good old two-hander. I just thought it was brilliant. And he deserved it quite frankly and he was giving it all the big and you know we you know they came to play we came to win so like, we talking about galena slapped one in from 30 yards like was that your was that your master plan like i just i just saw he was full of nonsense throughout the ties but whatever we, we came through it Hank Gary saying the tears of Conte Sal. That's my <laughs> snack check for tonight. Listen, nice. there was that yeah. comment wasn't there about we you know arsenal came here to play we came here to win and that would have been presumably the team talk last night. And I don't know about you, Laura, but I get weirdly giddy when I see the boys starting off and handbags kicking off. Like, I, I love it. I, I so want to see I. more of it. When people I, like, like you it know, properly, properly yeah. turns me on. So. Commentators, oh, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to see this. We absolutely want to see this. We <laughs> yeah. have, so we've sat through 120 minutes of boring football. I want to see a fight. I want to see blood. Yeah. Like, please entertain <laughs> me. Um, yeah. I also as you said, he he behaved like it from the first whistle. Like that, it was not kind of building up. It, it was literally screaming and shouting. His little bald Danny DeVito lookalike man with the shiny bald head was in the, you know, fourth official's ear for ages before, before they kicked off for extra time. It was just a really, really petulant display. And some of the Porto fans, were, uh, players were giving it to the fans uh, behind as well. So, 
just all in all, really bad tempered, but exactly what we want to see when we are on the right side of it, basically. I was I was entertained in that moment. I remember um, the Etihad, no, not the Etihad, Man City at the Emirates last year and De Bruyne gave Arteta a shove. And I was I was so disappointed that none of our players just went in to scrap them at that point. <laughs> like, Get your hand off my manager, right? And it felt like a year on, you know, it was our player who gave them a shove. Okay, it wasn't City. It was Con- Conceição. And then the way Havertz sort of jogged off like, what? Yeah. What do you mean? And then he sort of gave the ref a pat, like, oh, I hear you, man. No, don't worry. Yeah, I got you, bro. I got you. Like, I was just like, this is yeah. great. This I'm is so proud. I'm so yeah, proud. I was. I tweeted something like, um, I feel like Havertz embodies a little bit what I think the fans think they'd be like on the pitch. Like, we love this club so much. If we were on it, we would do the things Havertz does, which is like, you've been talking shit. We're going to let you know about it. Um, so I was really glad we had a little bit of that streak in us. Yeah, same, same. Uh, Dortmund have just gone 3-1 up, so they are through. But the Atletico game is going to extra time and we will end the show in just a couple of minutes' time. Last mm-hmm. thing before we look at your ideal or dream opponents before we go, and James, I know you're going to get dock points if you were to uh, be late for your 10 o'clock show. Uh, Mikel Arteta fine. and Arsenal sent out an email to all the fans asking for the energy, bringing for the intensity, the flag display. The image is on the right-hand side there, courtesy of Chan. If you're not available, if you're not uh, aware of what Chan's doing, at Chan, C-H-A-R-N-S-B-1 on Twitter and Lower North Bank on Instagram. His photography is insane. Uh, Check it out. The two images there on the right-hand side. What did you make of all of that? You know, a rallying call to the fans, Laura, for Arsenal you know, to bring the energy, the display, the flags, the TIFOs are all there. It was... I mean, it's a phenomenal night. I, I I loved it. I loved it. Do you know what I loved the most as well? It's like within the first sort of when the light show went off, the Porto fans uh, let off red flares. I was like, great, thanks, lads. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if someone's missold you these. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, the blue. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, yeah. But that you know that certainly added to it. I thought I thought it was brilliant, and I thought the atmosphere maintained through the majority. And I've got to say the North Bank put in a superb performance during the penalties. There was someone directly sort of opposite me, like flashing their phone to the extent that I was put off. So, you know, with the scarves and everything, it it was amazing that that was right in front of our fans. It really was. And James, as someone who was there as well, I mean, what did you make of the atmosphere on the night? And is it something you'd like to see more of? I mean, you know, using the fans to, or, you know, emailing the fans and contacting us to really get the message there. Yeah, I I think an atmosphere works like that when it's not that often. Like, I think we dream of this perfect world where, oh, you you know, Anfield, every game. It's like (laughs) West Brom at home at three o'clock. It's not like that, is it? And and I think that's what I kind of, you know, earlier in the season, there were some questions about whether the Emirates was more flat, which I think were fair questions. But at the same time, why does it need to be raucous for Fulham at home? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, we drew that game, so maybe it needed to be. But my, and actually, sorry, it was raucous for that game. I was at that one. That was nuts. But like, generally, my point is you pick your moments. That's what makes it special. And the Emirates did. I felt the crowd were in and out of it at times, started brilliantly. But then obviously, suddenly we were like 30 minutes, like, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the nerves, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the anxiety, the excitement, and the, the yeah. trepidation of, you know. But, the shootout for me, you're right. The crowd were unbelievable, especially behind that goal. And it was almost like, do you ever leave a football match and sort of do the whole like, you know, like I don't, I, I don't want, I don't want to see a highlight reel. But I was like doing that because you turn into animals, just like boo, like what am I saying yeah, boo for? That was as it's... feral as I've seen the crowd for yeah. a long time. There was some serious. I, I was worried for the kind of cardiac health of a lot of people Arsenal there yesterday because it was like someone's going to die here and it might be the referee or it might be the man behind me (laughs) who's so angry at the referee he's going to pass away but hey it was uh, i think that's what arteta wanted (laughs) yeah was that that what you were after is that about right you need boss yeah (laughs) it was brilliant it was brilliant a a memorable night in so many ways and obviously we got the result that we wanted and you know if this is what the club are going to do for the big games and we've got some massive games to come um you know so be it and talking of massive games james just before you jump off we are now, of course, through to the last date for the first time in uh, a lot in a long time. Put it that way. Uh, the last few Champions League season campaigns, we've gone out at the round of 16 at each of those stages. Now the big six 
have already qualified. <laughs> look, look at me, shameless, the big six. <laughs> Arsenal, Manchester City, Barcelona, PSG, Bayern and Real Madrid. European of royalty, course. some may say. <laughs> Absolutely. The Europe's top table. Where are you, eh? United fans, where are you, eh? Liverpool? Um, but listen, Dortmund are about to, or I think have just made that seven out of eight. It could be Atletico Madrid, could be Inter Milan, depending on what happens in Spain in the next half an hour. We will go uh, and watch that, I'm sure, straight after this. But who do you want, James? Who's your, who's your pick of the bunch? What would you like to see at the Emirates so, in a few weeks' time? So throughout this whole stream, my cousin, my Italian cousin, has been sitting there on the big screen watching Inter Milan. Fair play to him because I've seen him internally struggling. going, <laughs> <laughs> And how he's managed to keep quiet throughout the whole stream. I told him, I'm live. You're going to have to keep. He said, yeah, no problem. Fair play to him. But I'd, I want Inter to go through and I'd love to play them. Pure family reasons. I love that. Uh, listen, yeah. if anybody wants to follow James, he is available at James B underscore AFC. James, I don't want to get docked points. You've got a lot of people watching this channel <laughs> who are going to jump straight over to your show. Thank you very Please much. Please do uh, feel free to uh, to jump off. Uh, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate Thank you. Lovely time, to meet you, Laura, as well. And FK, thanks for having me as always. Absolute pleasure. Always. Thank you, everyone. In a bit. Pleasure. All the very best, my friend. Uh, Laura, who would you like to see as I just bring up some of the chat? Uh, Patrick says Dortmund would be amazing. Love their stadium. What a great away day. Um, yeah. Who, who are you sort of thinking? Um, uh, so you know, uh, who I would agree. you like to see? Uh, I've been to Dortmund. I've been to an away day at Dortmund, which was amazing. Um, it really was. They were also incredibly friendly. I know that we like the animosity between between fans, um, but there's you know there's, there's, there's a fine line between kind of animosity and in Europe, getting a bit it gets a bit stabby. So Dortmund were were really really good and really good fun. I don't really care, but I do not want City. I do not want City. I don't want to see. I presume we can draw them now. Um, yep. What I, my worst case scenario is City, where we play at home first and then we have to go to the Etihad as the second leg. I just that would be a disaster oh, for me. Like excuse that. me while I vomit. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, maybe, maybe nick a 1-0 at the Emirates and then lose 4-0 at the Etihad, oh. etc. I kind of would like Bayern just to avenge some, some you know, memories. Ten twos. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be nice. Um, but ultimately, you kind of want the big guns, don't you? You want Real Madrid, maybe Barcelona. I don't know. All of them are a good away day, to be honest. But the lo- I, if I see City on Friday, I'm gonna throw my laptop out the window. Really, I'm gonna, I'll be, I'll be sick if we get City. Well, listen, um, this draw is unique in that you're going to get the quarterfinal draw and the semi-final draw. And of course, you are right. We can play Manchester City from now on in. And for me, Laura, I completely concur. I um. Oh, my daughter would be proud of that alliteration. She's going through alliteration at school. Completely concur. Wow. She was I talking can, to you know what, FK, about I, Lucy the I, Lion. I can feel the energy is just, you're thinking about it, aren't you? You're thinking about it. I am genuinely, yeah, she'd be, <laughs> oh, well, no, let's not, let's not talk about Manchester City. But like, all I was going to say is that I think City would be the nightmare draw for us because we need to avoid them. And I think our best chance of if we have to play them would be over one tie as awful and as sick, like inducing that would be. Um, the rest of the teams, I mean, look, Barcelona are not the same Barcelona they once were. Real Madrid are scarily good um so Barca you know go back there and and twat them had the Harry Kane linked to Bayern Munich PSG look as as good as we are uh, down our right hand side Um, I don't really want to come up against Kylian Mbappe but I suppose at some point you have to Uh, I wouldn't want to play either of these two Atletico or Inter Mm. I think they are both shit houses um I've got painful memories Atletico would be yeah it'd be another Porto wouldn't it my brother said to me last night and Simeone on the touchline that could be quite fun Go on. What did your brother say? He was like, "We're going to get, we're going to get Atletico Madrided tonight. Like they're just going to, oh. you know, stink it out." Which, to be fair, that Porto were a bit better than that last night. But that could be box office Arteta and Simeone. That could be really, really good. It it could be. Uh, listen, do you know what I'm going to call it? I would love to see Real Madrid play Arsenal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's been a long time. Obviously, the last time we went to the final was in 2006, and we took on Real Madrid and we went to the Galacticos and we done them Thierry Henry yeah. with that magnificent goal and maybe maybe there's something written there we're but just, listen the draw just, is on we're Friday just happy to be here just happy to be amongst yeah, it we're, <laughs> we're just so happy yeah, but you know what we're not here to take part 
we're here to take over now uh, let me tell you right Uh, i think we're going to end it there uh that is the end of the content Uh, we have of course extra time now being played in madrid so i'm going to go off and watch that laura thank you so much for joining me tonight i really appreciate it there are 2200 of you watching live right now which is insane if you are on youtube please do drop the video a like Uh, if we can get to 500 likes that'd be amazing but every like really helps helps raise the profile of the channel on youtube and it's immense to be able to grow this community and i love making content for you guys if anybody wants to follow laura she is available at laura kirk 12 on x laura thank you uh, enjoy the rest of the week and it's a break for the boys now so what, what are you are you jetting off to dubai straight away are you, are you following suit I wish. No, I'm actually, I'm heading to Wales this weekend to do some hiking oh, in wow. Brecon Beacons. <laughs> Brecon. Been to the Breckens before? I have, it's beautiful. Oh, it's sensational. Yeah. And Tenby Bay. Oh, what a beach. I've been there, have but yeah, been? We're, we're doing a Penny Fan and Fanny Big and all those ones, which are mountains okay. for everyone listening. They're not, you know, it's not a rude word. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm smiling as if I know what you're talking about. Really. <laughs> but yeah, no Dubai for me. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. I hope you have a lovely time. And for for those of you who are wondering what we're going to do on the channel without all these games, I mean, look, FA Cup weekend coming. We're probably going to do a title race countdown. Uh, so, you know, 10 games left now for each of the three teams. What do we think is going to happen? So we'll do a couple of shows on that. We'll do a couple of Q&A shows. I'm off to Thailand for a few days and I'll be flying back, leave my family over there just to go to Manchester and watch the game. Uh, so l- listen, enjoy the next few days, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Uh, let's see what extra time brings us now in the Champions League. And let's look forward to the draw. That's all we can say so let's leave it there thank you for watching drop a like drop a drop a chat drop a subscription on the channel do whatever you got to do until next time it is bye for now